So if you clicked on this video, you're probably wondering why we're looking at the Caribbean Sea and talking about impressive mountains. Well, as it turns out, there are quite a number of extremely impressive mountains in the Caribbean, particularly in the Greater Antilles here, the bigger islands in the Northern Caribbean, Jamaica, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, and Cuba. But there's one in particular that stands out uh, with respect to anything else on planet Earth. There's literally nothing else like it. And that is Pico Turquino, which is the highest peak on Cuba. Uh, if you have Google Earth, you can look at this for yourself. Google Earth definitely knows where to find it. And Pico Turquino is not particularly high in terms of its elevation with respect to other mountains around the world. It's about 6,400 feet above sea level at its summit. That's just a little bit under 2,000 meters. But its steepness, and particularly its steepness, if you keep going offshore, are unlike anything else that you can find anywhere on the planet. And that's because the Cayman Trench, which is underneath the hand here about 22,000 feet deep, is straight off the coast from Pico Turquino, and the summit slopes steadily all the way down to 22,000 feet below sea level from about 6,500 feet above sea level. And that gives you 28,000 feet of, of relief, of elevation difference, over about 20 miles. Um, so that's going to be something like 30 kilometers or so of distance over the Earth's surface, but you can throw the, the ruler tool there in Google Earth. And I'm right now over about 20, this is 22,155 feet below sea level. That's 19 miles from the summit of, of Pico Turquino. Um, again, there's, there's nothing like that anywhere. Um, that level of steepness over that distance is something that if you look at other mountain ranges around the world, it's actually pretty tough for Earth's rocks to support anything like that. Mountain elevation on planet Earth is actually limited ultimately by not only erosion, but simply by the strength of, of the rocks that are present in Earth's crust. They have a very limited physical strength, and if a mountain gets too big and steep, it's actually going to start sort of collapsing and, and falling apart. Uh, what you see here at Pico Turquino is greater than anything in the Himalayas. Uh, it's greater than certainly what you see on the big island of Hawaii. That is the largest mountain on earth in the sense that from the ocean bottom at the edges of the big island of Hawaii to the summit of the big island has two summits, Mauna Loa and Mauna Kea. They're about 14,000 feet above sea level. They're very similar in their elevation. The overall elevation difference from the ocean floor to the top of Mauna Kea or Mauna Loa, it's over over 30,000 feet. It would be 32 or 33,000 feet, depending on where the deepest spot you can find in the ocean is. But again, that's over a, a huge, huge horizontal distance compared to what you see here uh, on the south coast of Cuba. And the cool thing about looking at this on Google Earth, of course, is that you can tilt the view and in modern day Google Earth, you can actually fly down underneath the ocean and tilt the view and sort of see yourself looking out over the Cayman Trench there. Um, this does not look particularly impressive when you think of an ocean trench. You're going to think of something really close and narrow like that. Uh, ocean trenches are not like that on planet Earth. They're actually much wider than you would ever think, and the Marianas Trench is another example of that. But sloping down from this elevation again, 6,400 and change feet, so just under 6,500, just under 2,000 meters, down to the coastline in three and a half miles, so something like six kilometers or under six kilometers, just a little bit, and then sloping further down until you're 22,000 feet below sea level, over that distance of about 20 miles is, is absolutely unrivaled. And you can prove that to yourself by looking at other features around the world with Google Earth that might have a snowball's chance of comparing to that. One is pretty close by. Got the Puerto Rico Trench here. That's 28,000 feet deep at its deepest point. But you can just eyeball the distance there to Puerto Rico, to the Dominican Republic on the island of Hispaniola, 
and it's much, much, much farther than that distance from Pico Turquino to the bottom of the Cayman Trench. So that one's going to be a write-off. Just for comparison, we can go check out the big island of Hawaii. And of course, Google Earth will take you there as well. That should be a pretty easy one for it to find. And if you look at the big island with respect to the ocean floor, yes, there's plenty of deep and pretty flat ocean floor around it. But if you get the ruler out here and make any kind of a distance comparison from the summit of Mauna Kea to the coastline, you're already at about 16 or 17 miles. And we're about 4,000 feet deep at the end of the line there at 22 miles. Moving in other directions here, 20 miles won't even get you to the coastline. And if you make an overall measurement of, of what you might call sort of the footprint of this big island, you're looking at about 110 miles across or something like that. So yes, there's a little bit more overall elevation difference here at the big island, but in terms of, of the steepness, um, essentially you might think of it as the stress that's being put on the rock that's, that's actually holding that mountain up. Um, the, the steepness is considerably less, and that's actually because the big island here is built up uh, ultimately on volcanic rock that erupted under the ocean initially. That makes it pretty weak, so the big island here has uh, essentially like a weaker foundation um, than other ocean islands or other mountain ranges around the world, and that's going to be a big limiter on how tall it can get with respect to how wide it has to be to, uh, to support that elevation. So where else might you find relief to rival 28,000 feet uh, over something like 20 miles? And the Marianas Trench might be one place to do that. So if you want the deepest point in the Marianas Trench, you want the Challenger Deep. So we'll go there right now. I can't quote you at absolute depth here. We'll see what Google Earth says. It's looking at about, about 34,000 feet deep or something like that. I thought it was about 35, but you know, it's not a whole heck of a lot of difference. Uh, what will 20 miles get you from the Challenger Deep? So measure about 20 miles away and still about 21,000 feet deep there. Uh, and you'll see something like that, of course, in, in any given direction from that point. So. This is a place that has adequate elevation difference or depth difference so that there's a huge amount of relief on, on the rocks of Earth's crust, but it's spread out over a much, much, much wider area than you see there at Pico Turquino. Uh, another place you might want to look, of course, is the tallest mountain above sea level on Earth, Chomolongma, Mount Everest. Google Earth will take you there, of course. I don't even know what the quoted summit elevation is these days. It changes a little bit now and then, and it always is actually changing. I think it changed a few feet uh, after the big earthquake in Nepal in, in 2015. But it's a bit over 29,000 feet. 29,035 was one of the last ones that uh, that I heard quoted. So. We zoom out a little bit here and try to get a sense of where you actually are in this enormous, massive mountain range. It's big. Uh, it's it's spatially very big and, and spread out there. And if we zoom in on Mount Everest, you can always find where Mount Everest is in Google Earth because it has this little like kind of triangle shaped valley network and it's up there in that top right corner. So if you want to impress your friends finding Mount Everest on Google Earth without actually typing into a search bar, that's what you need to look for. We'll go to the summit here. We'll put the ruler on it. And there we go. See how far away we can find some lower elevations, about 20 miles away from the summit here. And elevations down in this gorge or something like just under 9,000 feet. So there's about 20,000 feet of elevation difference from the summit of Mount Everest to 
the lowest low point that's that's about 20 miles away so again that's that's well well short of, of what you see there at uh at pico turquino on the south coast of cuba so is this a good way to think about earth's mountains like is 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 it even reasonable to care about which which mountain is the biggest so you could say that, that that's an interesting question to ask because like i said mountain height is a product of tectonic setting uh it depends on what's actually being done to the rocks of the crust are they being uplifted uh, is there a lot of heat underneath them that's causing them to bulge and rise and of course mountain size uh, in terms of overall relief like how big the mountain is compared to the land around it or to the ocean bottom around it says something about uh, the kind of, of steepness and elevation that earth's rocks can support there's larger mountains on other planets in the solar system because they're smaller and they have less gravity uh, the rocks on those planets are actually fairly similar to some rocks that are present on earth uh, when water is not an issue uh, and when gravity is reduced it's actually possible to make a good bit bigger mountain out of essentially the same materials but there are of course pretty significant limits on what you can see on planet earth and it is said that something like a chomolongma mount everest is probably you know about as about as big as a mountain can become on planet earth but when you step back to good old pico turquino here a way to think about it is that you could take all of mount everest elevation from sea level to the summit and set it down here in the bottom of the cayman trench and it, it might stick up just a little bit above uh, a little bit above pico turquino there so that is why this mountain on the south coast of cuba is arguably the most impressive in the world. Uh, the amount of elevation difference is not the greatest that you can find on the planet, but the steepness, how rapidly you go from 22,000 feet below sea level to about 6,400 or 6,500 feet above sea level. It's over a distance of 20 miles, completely unrivaled anywhere else. Uh, I don't actually even know why this occurs. Uh, in terms of trying to explain that one particular issue is that Cuba being a good sized landmass uh, sits on, on something that would be like continental crust uh, down here where the Cayman trench is that's on oceanic crust. It's different rock types. Uh, the earth has oceans because those are huge areas of, of oceanic crustal rock, basaltic rock. It's more dense. It sits lower. Basins are filled with water. Uh, this is a very small sliver of oceanic crust that's next to a more buoyant and thicker continental crust. So it's two rock types that are sitting right next to each other. Uh, that might be part of it. I actually don't know if there is particular tectonic movement that is enhancing that elevation difference. If you step back further here, got the Caribbean plate. Up here at the very top of the Caribbean plate is actually a miniature plate, call it a microplate. Uh, that's the Gonav microplate. It's named for the Gulf of Gonav on the west coast of Hispaniola. Uh, Port au Prince Haiti opens out onto the Gulf of Gonav. And that Gonav microplate does have uh, a little sliver of this oceanic crust in it. It's very unusual to have that oceanic crust sitting right next to this block of more like continental crust on on such like a crisp boundary as you see here so certainly one aspect that explains why there's so much elevation difference here is just two types of crust sitting right next to each other along what's essentially a plate boundary but it's not a, a typical oceanic trench that would be associated with subduction and i'm not sure if something related to the movement here because the 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 movement here would be i'll try to do this right i think it, it reflects the screen so the, the the movement would be like that and i hope i did that right because um because again like the the screen recorder here will like flip the image but uh ultimately the way you would you would want to think about this is that the caribbean plate is moving in that direction out into the atlantic basin whereas the North American plate relative to that would be moving in, in this direction. So as you look at Google Earth, it's like a it's like a top to the left type of motion. So there is movement along that boundary, but the extent to which that is is making Pico Turquino 
so prominent above the ocean floor there. I can't, I can't really tell you. I wish I could. Um, the, the depth here in the Cayman Trench, I mean, in, in terms of overall ocean depths, looking at trenches all over planet Earth, it, it, it's pretty deep. The Puerto Rico Trench at, at 28,000 feet just off the screen on the right is the, the deepest point outside of the Pacific Ocean Basin. And certainly the Cayman Trench is going to be pretty close, pretty close behind that. So it's a really, really strange place to have the highest peak on an island sticking up right above what is you know, arguably the second deepest point in the overall Atlantic Ocean Basin, and they're sitting right next to each other. So it's a really unique spot. There's a few videos on YouTube of people that, you know, that hike to the summit of Pico Turquino. Uh, given its proximity to the ocean and comparing what other big Caribbean mountains are like, I've hiked up Blue Mountain Peak in Jamaica several times, and from the top of Blue Mountain Peak, it, I mean, it feels like you're standing right over the ocean, and Pico Turquino is actually considerably closer to the ocean than the summit of Blue Mountain Peak. It's not as tall of a mountain, but I'm quite sure the view from up there looking out over this is really awesome. I mean, there's, again, like there's not really many places around the world where you see a mountain this big, this close to sea level to begin with. And of course, when you pair that up with the, uh, with the ocean trench depth right next to it, it is quite literally, uh, an unrivaled place on planet Earth. So if by chance someone watches this that has actually been to the summit of Pico Turquino, please give a comment, share a photo, whatever you got. Love to know more about it. Um, I'm not sure I can even go to Cuba anymore, but if I ever find my way there, this one is certainly going to be on the list.